Thank you, Robert. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you have come to worship with us on such a busy holiday weekend. So you have the opportunity this morning to just breathe. It's been a crazy week, hasn't it? Yeah, as you can see, things are going to be a little bit different today because today is our annual Hanging of the Greens. It's the day that we start the season of Advent by preparing our hearts and our homes for the coming of Christ. And you will be asked to do some things during the service. The first thing I want to point out to you is as you came in the door, did everybody get a little clear bubble and a little red piece of paper? If you did not, then I bet Heidi would be willing to walk back there and just make sure that you get one. At some point during this service, I'd like you to think of a person in need of prayer, somebody that is near and dear to your heart. Write their name, I've already written mine, on the back of that sheet of paper. Then pop off the top, fold your little paper. You didn't know you are going to have to get crafty today, did you? <laughs> Stuff it in the little hole and then put the top back on the ornament. Now, if you have trouble getting your top back on, Linda Branham, where are you, Linda? Raise your hand. She'll keep an eye out for you. You can go walk up to her. She is a pro at these little things. <laughs> um, or, you know, just talk to the person next to you and see if you can get it in there and get that top on. There will be a time during the service where you will be invited to come forward and hang your prayer request on the tree. We will pray for these people throughout the season of Advent. And after Christmas, we will take all the little prayer requests out and offer them to anybody who would like to make a commitment to randomly take one or two names and pray for them throughout the year. So does everybody understand what we're doing with the tree? We will have these ornaments available for you throughout the season of Advent, so you don't have to come up with everybody or the perfect person today. You can come next week, hang an ornament on the tree. The following week, hang an ornament on the tree. Come in midweek. You're welcome at any time to put a prayer request on the tree and know that we will be praying. The other thing that I'd like to bring your attention to is if you look at the end of your pew, you might see a wreath. If you see a wreath at the end of your pew, there will be a time during the service where you will be invited to either stand up, put that wreath on a nail on the wall next to you, or if you don't want to do that, hit the person next to you and say, hey, go hang that wreath, will you? Just as long as all the wreaths get hung up on the wall, just watch, you'll, you'll be fine. Um, Take it. <laughs> Look, we're already having problems with the. <laughs> um, if you have not already signed the pew pad, if you could just sign that so we can keep a record of your attendance and send it on down, not only for our own records, but just in case somebody calls and says, I have COVID, we would like to make sure that everybody knows. We won't reveal the person's name, but we just want to let you know if you have possibly been exposed just to keep you safe. Um, and Liam, let me say it's great to have you back in the sanctuary today. Welcome home. <laughs> it's good to see him up and about, fully recovered. Do we have any other announcements for the congregation this morning? Then let's take a deep breath. And have a moment of quiet prayer as we prepare our hearts to worship this day. Gracious and holy God, how good it is to be in your house as we enter the season of Advent the season where we remember your promise and our purpose as we patiently wait in hope, peace, joy, and love for the coming of our Savior. Lord, may everything that we do in this time together prepare us fully for this season as we worship and glorify the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
join me in the call to worship. Lord Jesus, we await your coming. We wait filled with hope, knowing your light will shine in the darkness. We wait anticipating your peace. Believing that one day it will fill our world. We wait embracing your love. As we reach out to share it with our neighbors. We wait with joy. Recognizing your presence and movement among us even now. Lord, we wait. Come, Lord Jesus, and fill us with your life. Let's take our hymnals and sing together hymn number 82, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Please listen for our opening prayer. Faithful God, your promises stand unshaken through all generations. Renew us in hope that we may be awake and alert as we watch for the glorious return of Jesus Christ, our judge and savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may remain seated, but let's continue to pray in song. If you turn in your hymnals to hymn number 92, let's sing together, While We Are Waiting, Come.
Hear the word of the Lord from the prophet Jeremiah 33, 14 through 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he will execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Today we light the candle of hope. May it remind us of God's great promise to us all. He is our hope, he is our redeemer, and he is our savior. Let us pray. Faithful God, out of death you bring life. Renew us in hope that we may be alert to the burgeoning of Christ's advent among us. God God of promise, God God of hope, into into our our darkness darkness come. If you look in your bulletin, you'll see the words to our Advent hymn, Candles Glowing, Promise Showing. You may remain seated as we sing together. Infant holy, infant lowly is the tune, Robert. There will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as the joy of the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled into blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For the child has been born for us, A son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. As we light the candles in the tree in our house this season, we remember the coming of our long-awaited Messiah who brought the light of hope into a world of despair. And we look forward to his coming again on that day when darkness will be completely dispelled in the light of his mercy and grace.
For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Just as the evergreen endures all seasons, we can endure all things, knowing that what we experience today is simply the beginning of a life that will never end in the arms of a merciful God, who loves us so much that he was willing to open himself completely to us through his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You are invited to stand at this time and turn to hymn number 110. And as we sing, if you are sitting near a wreath, you are invited to hang it on the wall. Would you come? Poinsettias. From Romans 5, 6 to, uh, 5, 6 to 11. For while we are st- were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly indeed. Rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But God proves his love for us in that we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, Much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Red is the color of God's love. As we place poinsettias in the sanctuary, we remember the blood of Jesus who came and died for us so that everyone can live in right relationships of peace with God and each other, both now and forever.
Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed shall be found there any more. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no light or lamp or sun. The Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. We decorate the tree in our sanctuary in anticipation of the day when we will all gather around the tree of life, completely healed, whole, and at peace. You are invited to bring the names of those people who are currently in need of the comfort that comes from the peace, joy, hope, and love that is available to every one of us while we wait for that day and then the place. And now place them on the tree where they will stay as we pray for them throughout the month of December and continue to pray for them throughout the coming year.
tree is always my favorite part. <laughs> and I want to thank everybody who came in on Friday morning and put everything together for us so that we could come and do this together this morning. Um, I sent a little video out. If you missed the fun, just watch it. And you can kind of see who was here and what kind of fun they have. If you need a link to it, just let me know. You can also go to our YouTube channel and see it on the playlist Midweek Musings. And it's there called Preparing for Advent. So a couple of months ago, I saw an advertisement for a dress online. I don't usually purchase clothes on the internet, and I was not familiar with this store, but the dress was pretty, and I could picture myself wearing it to several different events in the weeks ahead. So I gave them my name, my address, my telephone number, and my credit card information, and then clicked the big blue button that said, buy now. A few days later, I was delighted to receive an email with a tracking code that stated my order was on its way. But several weeks later, I had still not received the dress. So I clicked on the tracking code, which took me to a website in China that said, order is waiting for shipping with a timestamp on the same date as the email. But two hours later, on that very same day, it said, parcel is canceled. I checked my credit card statement and saw that the purchase price had been removed from my account. So I sent an email to customer service, politely explaining my dilemma. Two days later, I received a one-line reply that said, and I quote, Hello. Your order has not been canceled. It has been shipped to you. Please wait patiently. No signature, no explanation, no way to reply. True story, I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Just please wait patiently. Yeah. Now, if I really believed that dress had been shipped, I could deal with the delay, but I had no reason to believe it was coming. All I had was a few faraway words of assurance that I would receive the order as promised despite every indication to the contrary. Wait patiently. It is coming and is even now on its way. The irony of receiving those words so close to the season of Advent was not lost on me because those are the very same words God spoke to the people of Judah through the prophet Jeremiah when they desperately needed to believe. The Babylonians had come and destroyed everything, taking their king, their architects, their builders, their musicians and artisans, their strong young men and their healthy young women, in addition to every one of their wealthy, well-educated neighbors, leaving the poor, the sick, the elderly, and the uneducated people with no skills, no money, and no idea of how to move into the days ahead. They'd lost everything. And when they cried out in their distress, God sent them a word of assurance, giving them a reason to believe that they would not only survive, but thrive despite every indication to the contrary. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will Fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And the hope of that promise kept the people alive. That's what hope does. It strengthens and sustains us all through the long, dark days with a reminder that there is more to life than what we see and experience in the present moment. A better day is coming and is even now on its way. This week, my family has been preparing for the holidays. And as we've cooked and cleaned and decked the calls, I've found myself thinking things like, I hope the oven door doesn't fall off. That's actually a real concern. Ask me about it later. <laughs> I hope it snows. I hope nobody gets sick. 
or has to quarantine so we can all be together. But that's not really hope. That's wishful thinking because it may or may not happen. Wishful thinking sees the way things are and says, if only everything will be perfect, if only the oven stays closed, if only it snows, if only the family stays healthy. But hope is based on a certain future reality. Hope sees things the way they are and says, and yet, I know life isn't everything it could be or should be, and yet, I can see the possibility for change. Things are looking pretty grim right now, and yet, there is something beyond my limited understanding of the present situation that's working for good. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise. Even though you're living in a time of deep loss and despair, justice and righteousness will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And you will be known among the nations not as a people of corruption and chaos, but as a people of peace. The Lord will come and set all things right. And the belief in that vision of that certain future reality gave the people everything they needed to wait patiently. But nobody likes to wait. Amen? I saw an article this week that listed 15 scientific tricks for making waiting easier. I won't tell them all to you, but it did say that if you're finding it difficult to wait in line, wait in traffic, wait for a phone call, a diagnosis, or a file to download, turn on some music. In one study, callers who listened to panpipe music were willing to wait on hold for 20% longer than people who only heard a verbal message. Find a friend to wait with you. People who wait with strangers and keep to themselves are significantly more stressed than those who wait with a companion. Be mindful. Focus on your breathing. Be in the present. Let go of random thoughts that pull you away from experiencing and enjoying the fact that you're alive right now. Or if you're waiting for something wonderful, like a wedding or a vacation or a gathering with friends, Imagine what that will look and feel like when it finally arrives. Pay attention to anything but the wait. Watching the clock always makes a wait feel longer. And how long will we have to wait for the coming of the Lord? Only God knows. But what we do know is that God did send a Savior. And now we as the church declare that the promises God made to the people through the prophet Jeremiah are now real in Christ Jesus. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And in the meantime, we wait. We turn on the music and sing the hymns that strengthen and sustain us with the story of God's love. We gather with our church family and friends, bearing one another's burdens, rejoicing with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. We focus on the present moment and pay attention to everything God is doing right here, right now, with gratitude for everything God has given us. And we practice our faith by worshiping and studying and serving together as we look forward to the day when Jesus returns and makes all things new so we can live in right relationships of peace with God and each other for how long? Forever. Waiting patiently does not mean waiting passively. Because we wait with the belief of a certain future reality that has come 
and is even now coming through the hands and feet of those who follow Jesus in the way of hope, peace, joy, and love. For the days are surely coming, says the Lord. Do you believe? Let's remember God's promise and our purpose as we sing of the hope we all have in the coming Christ. You may remain seated, but let's sing together verses 1, 6, and 7 of hymn number 88. O come, O come, Emmanuel. the things that we do as we patiently wait is share of our tithes and our offerings that we use to help meet the needs of people in our community who are desperately in need of the compassion of Christ. So you are invited to do just that. You are welcome to leave your tithes and your offerings in the plate as you leave this place this morning. But at this time, let us stand as you are able and pray our prayer of dedication together. Gracious God, we offer you thanks and praise for this season of anticipation as we patiently prepare our hearts and our homes for your arrival. Accept these gifts of our resources and our lives. Show us how to use them wisely so that all may know the joy of living in your steadfast mercy and love both now and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
hear us as we pray the words your Son, our Savior, taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand once again, turn in our hymnals to hymn number 93, and sing together, Lift Up Your Heads. the grace of God, the love of the Lord, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you and in you as we remember God's promise and our purpose in this place as we celebrate the season of Advent waiting patiently and the hope, peace, joy, and love we all have in the coming Christ. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.